Hi everybody, this is a very uh, quick video that's giving some supplemental information for chapter three on prenatal development. So one thing that we want to talk about in terms of prenatal development is how the embryo develops. Phenotypic forms just basically means that you're taking the genetic information of the fetus and the fetus develops into a certain form uh, that's a phenotype. So uh, just basically you can think about this in terms of just how the fetus forms, but we call it phenotypic because we're talking about the translation of raw genetic stuff, the genotype, to uh, actually what the embryo looks like in terms of its phenotype. So we have cephalocaudal pattern. That's a very fancy way of just saying that when we look at how the embryo develops, it develops from the head down. So the embryo develops from the head down, and you probably have seen this. You've probably seen the embryos where the young embryos are like a big head and a teeny little body, and then the body develops later. So that's this pattern of development of the embryo. And that makes some sense. Our, our central nervous system, our brain, and our spinal cord needs a lot of work and a lot of development, so it starts very early in prenatal development. And then we have proximal distal. All that's saying is that the embryonic development goes from the middle of the embryo to the outside. So it's very similar. So the central nervous system, the brain, and the spinal cord are, again, very important things. And they're in the middle. The middle of your body is the spinal cord. And so that develops first. And then the internal organs and then the limbs develop. And so middle outward for proximal distal. So those are two things to remember for embryonic development. And actually you can see this, you know, you can kind of see that the head's big here and it takes a, a while for the body to form. So that's the cephalocaudal pattern. Proximal distal is probably would be better if it was some sort of cross section if the fetus was facing us, but you, d you can see this. You can kind of see that the inside, the spine, the central part of the baby is forming. The limbs don't form until later. So those are the more distal parts of the embryo. Now this chart is just to show you sensitive periods in prenatal development. And so green is, they probably should put this as red. So something happens in development at this period, so we go from early embryonic development, first, second, third week, to full term, 38 weeks plus. If something happens during those weeks, this green indicates that there could be major damages because those are the parts, those are the things that are being developed during that time period in the embryo. Uh, if something bad happens uh, during other periods, there can be minor damage, but it's not as bad as the major damage. And again, the major damage happens because it's that time period when those parts <clears throat> are being developed. So you can just see here that the central nervous system actually is vulnerable throughout, but it's especially vulnerable in the first five and a half, six weeks of the organism. <clears throat> So that is the uh, brain and spinal cord. So uh, that's what we talked about in terms of folic acid and why it's important to have folic acid early is because people are often unsure that if they're pregnant or not. And that's actually the very vulnerable time for the central nervous system. And so the folic acid can help prevent spina bifida, which is a split spine, which is a a developmental disability that is very pervasive and can have lots of effects and the central nervous system. And so vulnerability 
You can see here the heart is most vulnerable around here, around three to six weeks also. Arms are vulnerable here. Eyes are vulnerable here, etc. So you can look at this chart and see where the vulnerabilities lie. And this tells us how the fetus is also developing too. And then we talked about teratogens in class. And so, you know, these are environmental agents that can cause deviations from normal development and can lead to abnormal, abnormalities and death. There is a ton of these things. Uh, so, uh, when we talk about these things, there are some general principles. So, some general principles is there's the, suscept the susceptibility depends on the developmental stage at time of exposure right here. So if the exposure happens at certain periods in development, there's a larger susceptibility to damage to these various parts. So depending on when the baby is exposed to these teratogens, it will affect development in different ways. Uh, the effects are likely to be specific to particular organs. Part of that is that because some organs are developing at some stages of embryonic growth. Um, some of it is just in terms of the mechanism of the, of the teratogen. It may affect certain systems more than other systems, so that's why we have these particular organs. So there's specific damage or specific abnormalities that might be caused from teratogens. So individual organisms vary in their susceptibility. That means, you know, that the baby, same baby or different babies exposed to the same teratogens could have different reactions. So not every baby exposed to the teratogens will develop those abnormalities. Uh, it can be different across different people, across different babies. Um, susceptibility to teratogens also depends on the parent's physiological state. So the parent who's carrying the baby, their physiological health will affect the, uh, the impact of teratogens on the embryo. And that's sort of a, a general principle. The healthier that parent is, the better the baby will be off, including giving some uh, protective measures, if you will, to teratogens if the parent isn't healthier. Greater exposure, greater risk of the abnormal development. So, uh, you know, if we talk about air pollution, so if you're exposed to a moderate level of air pollution versus a high level of air pollution, the high level of air pollution is a greater risk. Greater exposure, greater risk. So some teratogens have little or temporary effects on the parents, but they can be very serious for the embryo, for prenatal development. Um, so some of the diseases I think that we're going to look at uh, follow that principle. Uh, that for the parent, the disease is not a big issue. Uh, they have it, they get over it, or illness, uh, but for the fetus, it has a lot of implications for fetal development. So those are some of the principles of teratogens. These are just examples. I'm not going to go through all of these. These are just some examples. There's many more, but these are just some examples. Here's some examples. Actually, maybe pollution is also a good illustration of that last one. So pollution for adults, they, they kind of handle it, even though it can uh, impact their respiratory systems. But um, most adults can take a lot of a pollution without having a lot of ill effects, at least in the short term. Uh, but for the embryonic growth, that could have uh, major implications. And then these diseases, I saw I mentioned these. So some of these diseases, uh, the parents are OK. You know, they might have something and then they get over it, but for the embryonic growth, it has major impacts. And so this is why sometimes we 
want to fight these diseases, not just because it impacts uh, adults and other people, but it actually impacts embryonic growth. And that's it. So, um, you know, I said it was going to be a short video, and it was. And so just some supplemental information related to Chapter 3.